Welcome to Coding Droplets, your go-to channel for comprehensive tutorials on .NET development. In this video, we are continuing our .NET Mavo tutorial series, where we explore various aspects of building cross-platform applications in .NET Mavo. If you are new to the series or want to catch up on previous episodes, make sure to check out the playlist link provided in the video description below. In today's video, we'll delve into the exciting topic of implementing the MVVM model view view model pattern in .NET Mavo using the powerful community toolkit.mvvm library. Before we dive into the project development, let's take a moment to preview the final output of the application we'll be creating in this video. By the end of this tutorial, you will have a fully functional application that allows you to add employees by providing their employee ID, name, email, and part-time status. Now, as we add the employee, you can observe that the newly added employees are listed in a list view providing a convenient overview of all the employees in our application. To demonstrate the dynamic nature of our application, let's add two more employee records. As you can see, the list view is updated instantly to reflect the additional employees we have added. This real-time synchronization ensures that our user interface remains up to date with the underlying data. Moving forward, Let's explore the functionality to view the details of an employee. By clicking on any item in the list view, we'll navigate to a details page that showcases the specific information we provided when adding the employee. This seamless integration between the view and the view model, facilitated by the data bindings, ensures that the user experiences a consistent and smooth application flow. Now that we have witnessed the final output and the core functionalities of our project, now let's dive into the project development. Having created a new .NET Mavo app project, let's proceed with the project development. Our first step is to organize our code structure by creating a folder named Pages within the project. With the Pages folder in place, we'll now create a content page inside this folder. This content page will serve as the employee detail page, providing a dedicated view for displaying employee specific information. As we open the employee detail page, we'll remove the default vertical stack layout and label as they are not required for our specific implementation. Let's proceed by providing a meaningful title for our content page. We'll set the title as employee details. Inside the content page, we'll now incorporate a table view control which allows us to present data in a structured tabular format. The table view will play a crucial role in displaying the employee information in an organized manner. Although we have not discussed the table view control in detail yet, this video will provide you with a comprehensive understanding of how to effectively utilize it. Before we dive deeper into the table view, let's explore one of its key properties called intent. The intent property defines the purpose of the table specifically for ios we have four options to choose for the intent property the first option is data which is used for presenting data in a tabular format the second option is form which is ideal for presenting a data input form the third option is menu which is suitable for presenting a selectable menu and finally the fourth option is settings which is used for presenting a table of configuration settings for our employee detail page, we'll select the data indent to present the employee data effectively. Within the table view, we can open the table root element where we can define multiple table sections. For our example, we only require one table section within the table root. To provide clarity and context, let's assign a title to the table section. We'll name it basic information. Now, within the table section, we can add multiple cells to display different employee details. For the first cell, let's use a text cell to display the employee ID. We'll assign the text property of the text cell as employee ID. At this stage, we won't assign any value to the detail property as we'll bind it later to reflect the specific employee ID. Next, let's add another text cell to display the employee name. Similarly, we'll add one more text cell to display the email of the employee. To provide additional functionality, let's incorporate a switch cell which displays an on-off switch. 
we'll use this cell to represent the is part timer status which is a boolean value now that we have set up the visual elements for our employee detail page it's time to create the corresponding view model class to handle the data and logic behind the scenes to keep our code structure organized we'll create a new folder named models within our project inside the models folder we'll create another folder named view models to specifically house our view model classes now within the view models folder let's create a new class named employee detail view model that will serve as the view model for our employee detail page in the employee detail view model class we'll create several properties to hold the data for the employee let's start by creating a property named employee id to store the employee's id next we'll add a property named employee name to store the employee's name following that we'll create a property named email to hold the employee's email address to capture the is part timer status which is a boolean value we'll add a boolean property with the name is part timer now that our view model is set up we can proceed to bind the values from the view model to the corresponding elements in the employee detail page in the detail property of the employee id text cell let's bind the employee id property of the view model similarly in the name text cell we'll bind the employee name property before we continue let me introduce a convenient way to simplify the binding process to make the binding easier we can assign the data type property of the content page to the view model type to do this we need to import the namespace of the view model class into the xaml file in our case the namespace of the view model class is mavoi mvvm demo dot models dot view models in the xaml file we can assign a prefix to the imported namespace let's use vm as the prefix short for view models we can use the following syntax to import the namespace xmlns colon prefix then cla hyphen namespace colon and actual namespace after assigning the namespace we can set the data type of the content page using the prefix we defined by typing the prefix followed by a colon we can see the suggested view model class employee detail view model which we can select now let's continue binding the value for the email property after providing the binding keyword we can see the suggestions out of which we can select the property which we need to bind for the switch cell we'll bind the is part timer property in a similar manner with this we have completed the binding of all the properties connecting the visual elements in the employee detail page to the corresponding properties in the view model now let me guide you on how to assign the view model binding to the content page let's open the employee detail page.xaml.cs class where we can create an instance of the view model class and provide some dummy data for demonstration purpose let's assign the employee id as 1001 and the employee name as john thomas we can also provide an email and set the is part timer value to true to connect the view model to the content page we'll utilize the binding context property of the content page let's set the binding context property to the view model object we created making the view model the data context for the content page additionally in the app.xaml.cs class we can make this employee detail page the main page by assigning it accordingly now let's run the project and observe how the employee detail page appears in the emulator in the emulator you can see the table view displaying the data populated based on the object we provided in the binding context of the content page the employee id employee name and the other details are now showing the exact values as specified in our view model now let's explore how we can populate different employee details using the same content page to demonstrate this let's remove the object and the binding context provided in the employee detail page dot xaml dot cs class as we'll assign it in a different way inside the pages folder let's create a new content page named main page i'm assigning the title of the main page as mvvm demo we can remove the label inside the auto generated vertical stack layout to align the contents at the bottom let's set the vertical options property of the vertical stack layout to end 
Now let's add a label with the text employees to serve as a heading. We can format the label to enhance its appearance. Below the label, let's add a button with the name employee button 1 and the text employee 1. We can also create a clicked event for the button. Let's copy and paste two more buttons and modify their names, text and click events. Now let's navigate to the main page.xaml.cs class. In the button click event of the first button, let's create an instance of the view model class. I'm assigning some sample values to the employee ID, employee name, email and is part timer properties of the view model object. Next, let's create an instance of the employee detail page. Then we'll assign the view model object as the binding context of the employee detail page. Finally, we'll navigate the user to the employee detail page using the navigation.pushAsync method. Now let's copy the same code and paste it in the click events of the other two buttons. Also we'll make sure to modify the employee details accordingly. Now let's move to the app.xaml.cs class and set the main page to the newly created content page. We can create an object of the navigation page and assign the main page as the root page. Let's run the application in the emulator and observe its functionality. In the emulator, you can see the three buttons we created on the main page. Let's click on the employee one button. Now you can see the table view displaying the data specified in the first button's click event. Let's try the second button now. Great, the data has been changed to what was specified in the second button's click event. Similarly, the third button will display the data specified in its respective click event. By utilizing a single page, we are able to display different data bound to it dynamically. With this approach, we can easily create reusable and flexible user interfaces that adapt to different data sources or scenarios. Now let's explore how we can notify the UI when the data changes. To demonstrate this, let's add an entry cell inside our table view. Let the entry cell also displays the employee name. I am binding the employee name property to the entry cell's text property. Let's run the application and check it in the emulator. I am opening the details of the first employee. Now we can see that the text cell and the entry cell displays the same name. Let's try to change the value of the entry cell. But as we can see, the text cell still shows the old value. It is not updating as we change it from the entry cell. To address this issue, let's open the view model class. We need to inherit the class from the iNotify property changed interface. Visual Studio is showing an error because we need to implement a property changed event handler to satisfy the interface requirements. Let's implement the property changed event handler in order to inherit the interface. Next, let's create a method named notify property changed to notify the UI when a property changes. This method will accept the property name as a parameter. Inside the method, we'll use the event handler to notify the UI. We can invoke the event handler by passing the sender and the property changed event arguments along with the property name as the parameters. To call this method, whenever the employee name is modified, let's create a private string variable for the employee name. Then let's assign the get and set methods of the public property. In the set method, after assigning the value, we can also call the notify property changed method. This way, whenever a value is assigned to this property, it will notify the UI by invoking the event handler. Now let's run the application and observe it in the emulator. You can now see that whatever changes are made in the entry cell, the changes are immediately reflected in the text cell. By implementing the iNotify property changed interface and utilizing the notify property changed method, we ensure that the UI stays synchronized with the underlying data. This allows for a dynamic and responsive user interface that reflects the latest changes in real time. Now, I'll introduce you a library that simplifies the implementation of MVVM with less code. The name of the library is community toolkit.mvvm. 
maintained and published by Microsoft as a part of the .NET Foundation. Let's install it from the NuGet packages. In the Browse tab, we can search for the library. Here, we can see the library listed at the top. Let me install it. Now, let's create a different view model to demonstrate the usage of this library. Let's name the class as Employee Detail View Model 2. The first thing we need to do is inherit the class from the observable object class, which is the part of the new library. Then we can declare the necessary properties as private. I'm declaring employee ID, employee name, email, and ESPA timer as private properties. Next, we need to add an attribute named observable property for these properties. Let's copy the attribute and assign it to all the private properties. Now you can see that it's showing an error in the class name, indicating that another partial class declaration of this type exists. This library actually creates another partial class of the same name which contains all the necessary public properties and the code for notifying the UI. Let me show you where we can find that newly created class. Let's open the dependencies of our project, then expand the Android section. Inside the Analyzer section, we can find the community toolkit.mvvm.source generators. Inside that, we can see another class with the same name we created. Let's open it. Here you can see that the public properties are automatically generated by this library. Note that the property names start with an uppercase character, while our private properties start with a lowercase character. All the public properties are automatically generated and the necessary code is implemented to notify the UI when a property changes. So, now we don't need to worry about all these implementation details. They are taken care of by this library. The only thing we need to do is make our class a partial class. Now let's assign this new view model instead of the old one. In the employee detail page.xaml, I am changing the data type to the new view model. We don't need to change the bindings as the public properties generated by the library already match these properties. Next, in the main page.xaml.cs class, let's change the view models we used during navigation. Now let's run the application and see how it works. I am just opening employee 1. You can see that when I change the value in the entry field, it is immediately updated in the text cell in real time. I just wanted to show you the comparison between the two view models we created. In the first view model, without using the community toolkit.mvvm library, there were multiple lines of code to achieve our requirements. But with the new view model using the library, we only needed four private properties along with the observable property attribute. This demonstrates how the community toolkit.mvvm library simplifies the implementation of MVVM with less code. Now let's dive deeper into MVVM architecture. I'm creating a new content page called Employee List Page where we will implement functionality to view and add employees to the list. We no longer need the hard-coded employee data in the main page, nor do we need the main page itself. Instead, we'll set the Employee List Page as the main page. I am providing a design overview without going into detail as we have covered the design aspects in the previous videos. The entry fields are placed here for entering employee data with the text property initially left blank for binding later. A button is included to add employees to the list. Next, we add a list view control to display the added employees. In the text cell, will bind the employee ID and employee name properties. Now, I am creating a model class for employee inside our models folder. This class will define the necessary properties for employee data such as employee ID, employee name, email, and ESPA timer. Next, I am creating a new view model named employees 
view model for the employee list page. This view model class inherits from the observable object class of the community toolkit.mvvm library. Let's declare the property using the observable property attribute. This property represents the list of employee objects to be displayed in the list view and we are using an observable collection of employees for this purpose. An observable collection is a dynamic collection that allows objects to be added, removed or updated with automatic UI notification. When an object is added or removed from the observable collection, the UI is automatically updated. We'll make this class a partial class as we have done previously. Another property we need is the employee object itself which will be bound to the entry fields used for adding new employees to the list. We also need to provide the observable property attribute for this property. Now let's bind the properties in the XAML file. First, we import the namespace to assign the data type. I'll provide the namespace prefix as vm and add the namespace as we did before. Next, we'll assign the data type. In the entry fields, for adding employee details, we bind the text property. We can see the suggestions in Visual Studio for binding the properties. We are using the employee object for binding, specifically binding the employee ID, employee name, email and is part-timer properties to the respective entry fields. Now let me demonstrate how we can bind a button click event. When the button is clicked, we need to add the provided details to the list. Let's move to the view model class. Here, I'm creating a new private void method named add. This method adds the current employee object to the employees list and clears the entry field text by assigning the employee object to a new object. Another important step is providing the relay command attribute for this method. Now let's navigate to the XAML file and bind the method to the button. To achieve this, we use the command property of the button and bind it to the add command. The community toolkit.mvvm library automatically generates a command named add command for us. And we can see this method in the auto-generated class. Let's navigate to the dependencies, then to Android, Analyzers and Community Toolkit MVVM source generators. Inside relay command generators, we can find a class with the same name as our view model. Let's open it. The community toolkit.mvvm library generated the code for the command binding. The add command will trigger our add method in the view model. Now let's move to our employee list page and bind the values to be displayed in the list view. For the data template, we can assign the data type property. The data type should be set to the employee class. To provide that, we need to import the namespace of the employee model class, which is Mavoi MVVM demo dot models. Let's import it with the namespace prefix models. Now that the namespace is imported, we can assign the data type of the data template to employee. In the text property of the text cell, we are binding the employee ID property and in the detail property, we can bind the employee name property. We also need to assign the view model as the binding context of the employee list page. We do this in the constructor. Next, let's set the new employee list page as the main page in app.xaml.cs. I forgot to assign the item source property of the list view in the employee list page. Let's bind it to employees observable collection in our view model. Additionally, in our view model, we can initialize the employee object with a new instance to ensure it's not null when the application loads. Now let's run the application and check how it works in the emulator. Let's try adding a new employee by providing the details. When we click the add button, the employee details are displayed in the list view. Let's add one more employee. It is also displayed in the list. And now we have two employees. Now, let's implement a feature 
where clicking on an employee in the list navigates to the detail page displaying the complete employee information. We also need to make some changes in the employee detail view model and employee detail page. In the view model, we can use an employee object instead of individual properties and in the employee details page, we can adjust the bindings accordingly. We no longer need the entry cell as we are only displaying the details on this page. Now, in the employee list page, we can implement the navigation to the details page when a list item is tapped. We can use the item tapped event of the list view control. From the item tapped event arguments, we can obtain the bound item. The item's data type will be an object, but we can cast it to an employee object. Let's create an instance of the employee detail view model and assign the selected employee to it. Then, create an instance of the employee detail page and assign the employee detail view model as the binding context. Finally, navigate the user to the detail page using the push async method. Let's run the app in the emulator and see how it works. We are encountering some errors while compiling the app because we previously implemented navigation in the main page and the view model structure was different. Let's comment out those implementations since we are no longer using the main page. Now, let's run the application again. I am adding an employee to the list. When we click on the employee, we are getting navigated to the detail page and see all the employee details. Let's add one more employee. When we click on the second item, it is also displaying the details of the second employee. We can easily view the details by tapping on the list view items. And that concludes our video on implementing the MVVM pattern and utilizing the power of community toolkit.mvvm library in .NET MAUI. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more informative content on .NET MAUI development. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and found it valuable in your learning journey.